Hey everyone, Irit here, and today I have a very fun video. I hope you will enjoy it. I do have a few warnings. <laughs> so I was very, very kindly sent these uh, beautiful watercolors. These are from Poland, and you can see that uh, they come in full pans. And they are very nicely wrapped with watercolor paper and there is actually a swatch of the paint how it looks on watercolor paper right on the pan which makes it very very easy to see exactly how it looks now I got sent these uh, beautiful shades but I can imagine that if you see these in store it really makes it uh, easy to you know pick the right color and uh, yeah I think it's a great touch now I want to say um, that these paints are not so easily available so if you come across them or if you happen to be in Poland or <laughs> you can uh, find them then uh, hopefully this video will be helpful to you but um, yeah, I, I, I do apologize if you can't find them. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. So I, w when I got sent these, I kind of got the impression, I don't know, maybe I was just confused that these are, I, I, would, I got the feeling they're almost like an Etsy seller. But then when I actually looked online, uh, I saw that this brand has a very wide selection of paints and other art materials. So uh, I guess they are a serious company. It's just that all the information that I could find is mostly in Polish. And I found also a couple of stores that carry these again. Polish stores, all the prices were in Zloty, uh, which is the local uh, currency, but I did um, check to see how much it was in Euro, and these are very affordable. So these, the whole experience of using them from the way that they are packaged and look and the way that they perform is very, very, very comparable to the White Knight's paints, in my opinion. And I love my White Knight's paints. They are, if someone tells me I want one set, I want it affordable, I want artist grade, good quality paints, my recommendation is still remains White Knight's. And these are very comparable. It's just that the fact that they are harder to find um, makes them less suitable for many of us. So... Yeah, but I'm just uh, unwrapping them and also trying to keep the packaging and make sure I have all the info on these, uh, you know, mostly for the purposes of this uh, video. I, I do find uh, certain information important, like pigments and obviously light fastness, if you are an artist that sells their work and you want to make sure that the painting looks the same in years to come. Uh, for me, mostly I paint in my journals, so that is not really important to me personally. But definitely every kind of artist grade paint should have that information available and should have their paint um, tested to know that it really lives up to the claims and that it can stand the test of time. So. Um, these do have a light fastness rating. I think most of them has a very good rating, but I think it's also uh, performed by the company itself, by the manufacturer. So yeah, all that, keep that in mind. Um, let's go through the colors. And as I swatch them, we can talk about them because uh, yeah, they are lovely. So the I was saying before that the experience of using these is very similar to White Knight's paints or St. Petersburg paint. And what I mean is that they are very intense and very creamy, very easily activated. Some paints tend to be drier and these are absolutely not. They're very juicy. So let's get to the paints. This first shade is Quinacridone Gold and it's a gorgeous 
color and it's very similar to others I have in my collection. Uh, very intense, beautiful. You can see it's transparent. Next one is Naples Yellow Deep and this one is semi-opaque and I really like it. It's it's kind of still like buttery and creamy and uh, very pretty. Next up we have Quinacridone Maroon. The Quinacridones are always transparent and this is probably one of the colors that I wouldn't pick myself because I always go for the brightest but it is very very beautiful and I'm very happy uh, I was sent this. Um, it's just a beautiful color and also when you get the lighter shades I think it would be beautiful also for skin tones because it becomes this very light kind of skin tone color kind of this peachy beautiful color very very pretty. Next is Azo Red and this one is quite an intense color. You can see that it's very, very intense. <laughs> the next color is Cherry Quinacridone and this one is quite, I think it's a, a quite a unique color and I'm very happy I have it. It looks very creamy. It looks very opaque in the pan, but it is actually quite transparent and uh, also, when it's very intense, it's still not very dark, which I like. Uh, sometimes the very intense watercolors can get super dark, and uh, this one is not, but it still has a very nice gradient as you water it down. So beautiful, beautiful color and something, again, quite unique in my collection. Um, next, we have Cobalt Teal. I love all cobalt teals that I've come across and this one is no exception. Cobalt teal is for me one of those must-have colors but it rarely comes in sets. It's also an expensive pigment and I think you know if you can get your hands on these I think that makes them especially good value. They're all very affordable but the expensive pigments are quite affordable. So I wish I could try like the cobalt violet because that's always one of those uh, colors that I hunt for, I love. And usually they are harder to activate once they are dry. My current pick for that is the Windsor & Newton cobalt violet. I haven't found anything I like better than that one, but I would be very curious to try this brand's version uh, because it is so affordable. So the cobalt teal is beautiful. Then we have that Deep Turquoise is Ocean Blue. Again, very intense, very pretty. Ultramarine, quite um, a beautiful standard color. I really like the way this one performed. It has beautiful granulation. Uh, I love the White Knights Ultramarine Blue. I have several of them scattered in different palettes because it is so affordable and so intense and so beautiful. And then another uh, kind of unique color that I got is the Mineral Violet, which if you're familiar with Rose of Ultramarine from Daniel Smith, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous color, this is very similar, but more purpley. But it has that uh, gorgeous granulation of the ultramarine blue, which is in it. And then it also has a, a violet uh, pigment in it. Um, usually I tend to go for the more pinkish purples, but this one, I have to say, is gorgeous and I'm definitely going to use it again. And then the last color I have is Shadow Violet, which is a mixture of three pigments and kind of, again, a unique mixture. It has ultramarine blue. It has actually cobalt teal in it and uh, purple PV19, which I don't know if I have anything um, that is like that. And it's a beautiful, beautiful muted purple with interesting granulation. I really love the mixtures here. I think they are very unique and a lot of fun to play with. So I just show you the swatching and now I'm just showing you some playtime and maybe you're wondering what is this paper? So <laughs> I have been really obsessed with using watercolors on thinner papers. I mentioned it in a different video. This one in particular is uh, an insert, uh, A5 insert, and the paper here is Tamoe River paper. If you're not familiar with it, it's, I think its origins are Japanese and uh, planners like, or diaries like the Hobonichi have this type of paper. 
And the magical thing about it, first of all, it handles watercolor extremely well for thin water, for thin paper, and they don't uh, sink through it. They don't bleed through it. And then the other side stays, um, you know, white and you can paint on it as well. And then the other thing, which for some people might be um, a disadvantage, but I'm addicted to it, is that they get this crinkle in them. And I, I don't know if that tactile experience does anything for you. Crinkly paper. I live for it. And <laughs> this just makes me extremely happy just to flip through um, my Tomoe River inserts with that uh, crinkly paper. So I absolutely love it. Now here I was playing also before I was playing just to see how the colors mix. I really, really love these. I enjoyed using them. I I think the standard colors are, you know, comparable to my other artist grade watercolors, especially the White Knights one. And then the mixtures that I received, I found to be beautiful and unique and I'm excited to play more with them. So first of all, I want to say thank you for the lovely person that sent these to me. I'm not sure he wants to be mentioned here. And um, I will link you to anything I can think of. There's also a Jane Blundell, if you're familiar with her, she's a watercolor artist and her website is a disaster <laughs> for art supplies collectors because she has swatches of pretty much every brand and every watercolor out there and she also swatched all the or almost all the colors of this range so if you want to see more check that out I will link to everywhere again I'm really sorry if you can't get these but if you come across them or you know you can go to your local uh, supply or local art store and maybe ask for them to carry these and this way you can get your hands on them because they are beautiful and they are affordable and don't we want that in our lives <laughs> we want all the colors and in a price that doesn't break the bank especially if you do a lot of art journaling if you do a lot of sketching you know um, you don't necessarily want to use your Daniel Smith tubes on everything so yeah um, Again, I really enjoyed this and I'm just having fun here with them. You can see just this was so much fun to make. I'm using also my Stabilo pencils. Those are a must have for me. I absolutely adore them. They write on everything and they're water soluble. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.